six o'clock to eleven thirty, and then I needed food. <laughs> um, I have a break around dinner time, so we'll do it then. Mostly because I had to feed the minions. Then they want to be fed every day. They're so needy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad to be done with all that. Yeah. <laughs> Soon enough. Um, okay, so we're at level 19. We're going to take a look at some images and then talk yeah. about Spear 2. How are you feeling? How are you? What's new in the wonderful world of Tom? I'm good, I'm good. I've just been busy, busy, busy. Um, you know, just cleaning up the website. Just, there's a lot of... Um, I'm going to hide this other window here. Um, just been working hard on the, on the final, you know, polishing of the websites. Um, mind body for photo trainer proves to be <clears throat> a continuous learning curve. I like it. All right. Well, let's take a look at the images first, and then okay. we'll um, then we'll chat a little bit about where you are and where you want to go, and what Sphere Two might look like, and how you're feeling about the Arcanum and all that good stuff. So, uh, can okay. You see so that? this was a shoot that I did for my portfolio uh, two weeks ago. Okay with an art director friend. And she's also in an acting group. So um, she, Tom Sawyer, one of her actor friends to be my model. And it was a trade. So I did some headshots for her. And then um, after we were done with that, we went up and shot kind of a, a sort of environmental portrait story idea that Suzanne Lyon and I cooked up. And um, it kind of, you know, it, it's always interesting when you do stuff for free or with friends. Um, wound up spending like three hours doing the headshots, and then by the time we laid in the day, we got to the location. It was literally the last cold day of the spring. Oops. You just you have the uh, viewing screen on for people that are actually watching the critique right now. So one of your other tabs is actually watching the critique. Uh oh. Okay. So, which would it be the house lark tab I should close? Uh, yeah, it's either that one or it's the hangout page. I would just close any G plus tabs right now. Yeah, because I'm. All right, let me see what's open. Did you get it? I don't hear the echo. I think you got it. Is that it? Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Are you still hearing the echo? Okay. Yeah, I'm not hearing the echo. Okay. I think we're good. All right. I think I actually clicked the right thing for once in Google. Yay! Karma points for you. Um. So at any rate, this was a this was a, a shoot for my website. Um, Suzanne thought I needed like a businesswoman shot, so we went back and forth and did this. Um, but wound up spending more time doing headshots for this lady than I got to shoot for myself because by the time we got to the shoot, it was so cold. The makeup person and the model were like shivering, and I I just couldn't torture them any longer. Oh, uh, I could have. So did. I did one shot, and then, you know, we were also losing light, and um, I just felt, you know, it was time to stop. Okay. Um, you know, you other, other weird things happened, like, I thought everybody was volunteering, and then after the fact, I, I get I get hit with a bill for the, the makeup person. Um, and it's my fault, because I didn't, I didn't make everyone real clear at the beginning, so... Um, yeah, it was just a little dicey. Yeah, that's um, that's on everyone though. I think uh, everybody should be really clear. Like, there is yeah. no question ever in anybody's mind whether or not they're paying me um, right from the beginning. So, if you and the makeup artist didn't sit down and discuss price and schedule, um, you know, that would be one that she would be chalking up as an educational experience for me, unless the relationship is really important to you. Well, I was doing this as a trade, but. I, I didn't know that the makeup person was going to be billing the model, and the model wanted me to split the makeup. But she didn't talk to me ahead of time. She talked to no. me after the shoot. 
then the model pays for it. That's yep. between her and the model, not you and the makeup artist. That's what I'm thinking. Um, okay, so. So here's the headshot and then some retouching I did to the headshot. It's just sort of a straightforward, you know, before and after kind of thing. Okay. Um, now, you said something in the middle of that where you said um, she felt like I needed a businesswoman in my portfolio. And this yeah. did not say business headshot to me at no, all. No, this is, this, is, this is just what I did for the model. This is not okay. for me. But it's just, it's just part of the process. Um, okay. And I'm interested in what you think of the before and especially the after. Okay, so this is the before and the next one's yeah. the after, right? Um, so, um, one, I really like this shot and I think that you do beautiful work out of camera. Um, you're one of my favorites to see um, right out of camera because you understand it which is part of what I think makes you a really good teacher for like photo trainer and stuff like that because you're teaching the photography element and I have seen work that has been retouched that is not on point like this is um, okay. so there's only there's only a couple of things as far as the photography goes there's a little bit of a hot spot on her yeah, here and on yeah. the cheek and the nose um, and I'd like to see just a little bit more light in her eyes I feel like we have a lot of shadow yeah. here that I'd like to see pulled out, but I think it's a beautiful shot. I would also um, have probably come in a little bit closer um, and not left so much dead space above her. Well, um, I did that intentionally because I am going to come in with an eight and a half by eleven, and then give her a, a you know a Z card title at the bottom because it's for SAG after it. And she needs the title and the that white bar that says who she is and where her agent is and all that stuff. Okay. So I. I you know, I just make myself nervous when I'm shooting and I find that like, I'm really tight because then I don't have room for her to work in the space and then work in her curriculum vitae or whatever that stuff is that, you know, they have to put at the bottom. Right. Um, um, he's already at, like doing commercials for car companies and stuff like that. So you're, um, I could you're, fix her chest skin though. I think I did her good on her face, but um, there's a little bit of redness in the, Chest I area. I don't mind the redness um, and the freckles. Like you could go in and touch out, but I feel like the color got lightened up. Your problem is that you're smoothing out and completely retouching all of her skin texture in her face and leaving mm -hmm. it. Like if you look at her chest, even though the color changes a little bit on the chest and the uh, shoulders, all of the texture and the freckles are there, and you take them all off of her face. Yeah. And I would actually like to see a little bit of a blend of the two because I think it's a little. Uh -huh moved on her face so i'd like to see you actually back off of the face a little bit okay um and carry it down because it looks like you i can see right here you stopped so yeah 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 carry it down the neck a little bit <laughs> um and it's just it's the smoothness not necessarily the color and i actually really like the original i think it's very natural and very raw beauty nice um and i think that her skin's just a little over a little Smooth. harder done, yeah. yeah. And that's one so, of my pet peeves, so I appreciate that. I think if we took that down, probably about, like if we could lay this over the original image and just take down the opacity about 50% to about halfway, I think it'd be perfect. Okay, um, yeah, that's, that's good did. feedback. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Because I really, really love right out of camera I think it's very natural she's a very she's very um, natural beauty and you captured that and I don't I don't want to lose that I would hire her off of this image oh I know and she hates her pictures the ones you took from her yeah, she hates these it's unbelievable <laughs> uh, well then I think if you went back and looked at them that yeah it's that not my be. problem it's not my problem it's just you know um, I stand by uh, cropping it a little lower too, okay. especially if you're yeah. putting the info in below her instead of above. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about this one. Okay, so then we just started, um, you know, I wanted to do kind of power woman on location. So um, I told Suzanne she had to bring her Porsche and I, my friends John and Nancy have this home where um, they... Uh, John's the provost at Stanford, so they do a lot of entertaining there. So they live there, and it's it's quite a regal location. And they let me do workshops and shoots there. So 
um, I just thought it would be fun to, you know, do a sort of a, an attempt at a power woman type shot. And because, I mean, as an actor, I thought, okay, we'll get all the elements together and then we'll see if she can give us the look, you know, that, that sort of... Are you, are you shooting natural light or do you have studio lights out? Um, well... Because it looks like you're shooting high noon here or pretty close to it. Actually, I have a speed light on her at a high angle. Okay. See that shadow on the tile behind her. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, like, it's like, actually, it's literally like... 40 minutes before sunset, 30 minutes before sunset. Okay. Um, so we were losing our light. Now, this is this was an attempt. I'm not really happy with the lighting on this. And I was um, using these new rogue grids for speed lights. And, um, I, I, and, you know, again, this is one of these things. I was using it for the first time instead of testing it first. Um, and... It was just really hot on her. I have others that, that where it's not so hot, and I'm shooting with a, a hard wire tether, so I'm actually shooting it like with a master. It's just connected to the hot shoe on my on my camera, mm -hmm. and then I can use the ETTL to dial up and dial down the strobe, um, and um, but. This one kind of intrigued me because of the angle and the composition. Um, I know that the, the light is really strong on her. The and light's I, really... What I, what I don't like is I don't have any light in her eyes. It just makes her look a little... Skeletor? Yeah. Yeah, or yeah. dominating, or, you know, but uh, combined with the angle and the lighting, I just gonna like the severity of the shot. <laughs> severity, severity is a good word, but no, no female client is going to buy this image because you gave her Neanderthal for forehead yeah. Yeah, um, because good. of the lighting. Mm. Um, so if we go in and look a little closer here, like we have that, that skeletal lighting where it's just the shadows in where the eye sockets are because there's no light. Yeah. In it. yeah, there's and, no light in the orbits. And I'm really going to smack your wrists on it because the light on the car and on the house and behind her is beautiful. So if you were shooting oh, I, an hour yeah, before I, sunset, you have beautiful totally natural agree. light. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, I have some in natural light, and I was just dickering with the strobe, and I thought it'd be better to show you stuff I was struggling with rather than, like, you know, get the easy, easy shots. Um, and, um, you know, I was... I was um, contemplating throwing another strobe right at her to fill those shadows, which I know better. You know, I know to do that. And, um, I don't even know if you needed the second light as much as you just needed a reflector below you to bounce it back up to her yeah. chin and her eyes. But again, I'm, I'm totally at wide angle, so um, I don't know where I would have put a reflector that would not be seen that would have contributed to... Filling the shadow, I think probably. You would have put it. You would put it directly it below seen. where the light is, wherever uh, you have that light position. The light would... is up above her to mm -hmm. our left as we're looking at the picture. It's you know over by the car up high. Yeah. Um, and you see, it's glancing down, so you can kind of see the angle of the light by based on the shadow behind her. Yeah. So it would have either been right below the light. And catching some of the spill off and yeah. bouncing up, or it would have been oh, right here on the is, side of her. The thing is that the light was gridded, so all that light is just going at her. The other thing, too, is because it was the first time I was using these grids, um, I was really unfamiliar with the, um, the tight spot, and so I was fighting that mightily, and then the, everybody's shivering and cold, and um, yeah. Well, she turned it out. I mean, the light's pretty on. On her clothes, you just have it too spotlighted on yeah. her face, and we're getting this yeah. highlight. But there's, for me, if I was the client, there would be nothing redeeming about this shot. The best, the things I like about it are the car and the house. Mm -hmm. So, as a client, I wouldn't buy it, especially as an actor, because it's not flattering on her face. It's not showing off her curves because you have this big briefcase creating this big square space here that's widening her out from here. Mm -hmm to hear.
Um, and because you shot with the angle, while it creates an interesting sort of um, a sort of perspective and distortion, it is distorting her. So it's making her legs look really long, but it's making her look like she's leaning back and it's pulling her body length and distorting her. So mm -hmm. if you have that tall angle, you have to have her bend at the waist because what's closest to the camera is what appears largest. So oh. if you look at the distance between here and here, her feet are bigger than her head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get they're it. also the same width as her waist. So you made her feet enormous and her head super tiny. Like, look at how big her hand is just in size from here to here. It's the same height as her face. Mm -hmm. So you'd have so, her bend the waist toward the camera? Yeah, you have her bend towards the camera so that the face comes forward and puts everything else back, which would make the head proportional and the waist tinier. Interesting, yeah. Cool. Um, so I love that you're experimenting and playing with it. Never do it with a paying client. The oh, no, this was totally for me, yeah. Okay. This um, was totally trade. I did headshots for her, and then she came up and okay, uh, then I'm, throws her I'm, fish off for me. Then in that case, I'm fine with it, and I'm glad to see you experimenting. This definitely wouldn't make your portfolio um, for me. I was hoping to do, like, four or six shots, but because they got so cold, um, yeah. we were losing our light. I And, you know, it was three against one. <laughs> <laughs> See, now this one totally would make your portfolio for me. This is the shot. The other angle yeah. didn't work. The lighting was yeah. not good. Well, this that's why I, I put in, I think, six or seven instead of five because I just yeah. wanted to show you how I shot around this. Nope, this one I love. I love this little space here that's accentuating the curve of her waistline. I love the positioning. I love the energy. That says businesswoman, high end. That one I can sell all day long. Can you see my mouse? No. Okay, so my question is, um, you know, I'm the one screen sharing, right? Yeah, I know. I just, just, <laughs> just <laughs> okay. <laughs> we old people lose neurons, Jessica. Okay, I don't all remember right. where I parked my car a half an hour ago. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, her right shoulder. Okay. Is tucked into that pediment that the sculpture is on and it creates a sort of a strong right angle contrast. Does that bother you? Um, no, but I could see other people pulling that out for critique. I kind of like the symmetry of it, but when it's really pulled out and I'm looking at it, it, it almost looks like it's part of the outfit. Cool. Yeah. That it goes on. So I could see it working and I can see other people pulling it out. But for me, it's not enough to pull, yeah. pull away from the shot. Um, the only thing that grabs my attention and distracts me is actually the curtains or the blinds up here. I would probably oh, go in and next. turn that color out yeah. and match it to the other windows because there's just a square of orange. Yeah, yeah, they um, that room, yeah. That's the only thing that grabs my attention. And then there's flowers here or stem or something. That breaks up the continuity. I would just touch that out too uh -huh. and just leave the flowers up high and down low. Um, this is a number four, seven. But I love the light on the car. I love the perspective. This one still has that interesting, like, distortion of perspective, but it works here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, they're moving. I'm going to hate not having that place to shoot in anymore. Okay, yeah. so now I've got the lighting dialed in a little better. You can see there's a little bit of a shadow on her neck. Mm-hmm. That indicates a little bit of speed light, but um, I, you know, I got. I'm happier with this light, um, and the light is fading. The strobe is fading, but I got some. I got some light in her eyes. And the makeup, the makeup is pretty strong, strong and dark. So I may go in there and tweak her eyes a little bit. But I again, I like the expression. I like the composition. I like this one. Um, but I just like it. This one's still better. Like the first one was definitely a no go for me. This one would be okay until I saw that one. And then I would tell you to drop this one out of your portfolio uh -huh. because we can't appreciate the shape of the car. We lose half the car. Yeah, got it, got it, got behind it. Got her. it. And there isn't enough of the house. Like 
In this one, we can still appreciate her. I like her body language better. I think she's stronger in the image. You can appreciate that it's a grand house and property. You can appreciate the brick driveway. You can appreciate the entirety of the car. All the elements come together and none of them overpower each other. Here she's dominating the image. And there isn't enough of these two to be standalone mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. So they just yeah. become distractions in the background. Yeah, and this is probably poor, part, probably more of a glimpse into just how I, I shoot when I'm, I'm in the flow of moving around and, you know, when the light is where I want it and then just playing with the composition. Because I could have stepped back and moved to the left a little bit and I would have had more car as I did in some other shots. And what you're not seeing is the, the 150 shots that I shot in 45 minutes. <laughs> Well, yeah, and I mean, you saw me work when you came to the nursery yeah. street. Like, you know, we had 10, 15 images from each little oh, pose, yeah. set or pose or area that we had her, and then we picked the best one. So um, I'm fine with you bringing these, but there's no contest for me that that is the shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's interesting. It's similar to the perspective, so I think that it works in terms of her and the car and the house. I'm not sure what's with the bottle. I guess it's wine. Yeah. Um, but you can't tell, so it almost looks like a two-liter Coke because of the perspective you have it at because all, all you're catching is the top of the bottle uh, yeah. and the general shape. So if she was holding that in the hand that's actually hanging down and we could see the whole length of the bottle, it'd be stronger or even if it was in this one, but it's not working where it is here and you're cutting out that triangle of space that we need to appreciate the shape of the body. Oh. Um, this one, we can appreciate that it's a wine bottle. The perspective is interesting in the fact that uh, leading lines are pulling away. So we have this line from her shoulder and then we have this contrasting line that comes up. So if the hand was down, her body language would naturally lead us up to look at the wine, which would be an interesting product shot if you mm. were shooting for the wine company. Um, I like that we can see half the car here and here as opposed to the other shot where we cut right. off the front of the car with her body. Um, but this one's too posed for me. Like, I've never seen anybody stand. Like, it looks like she's trying to take a call on her wine phone. <laughs> wine phone. You know? um, so it's it's a little too posed and, and fake for me. And I'd like to see just a little bit more space in her arm. Because you can see, like, the line from her thigh, from her knee, comes right up even with the line of the jacket. So there's this continuation of it. And then it widens out here and we only have this little triangle. Like this needs to really be like in following like the curve of her back here. Okay. So it's a little bit too wide because we create, instead of having the diamond or the triangle of space here to create the waistline where it should be indenting, now we have this giant diamond of width yeah. in the body because of the perspective. I'm not sure which lens you were using here, but you're it definitely was. getting a lot of distortion. Yeah, it was the uh, 24 to 105 at 24 on a full frame sensor. Okay. So it's interesting because um, I like the distortion elements that you're getting. I think that that might be part of what starts to set your work apart from other photographers. I like that you're playing with it. But when you're playing with distortion, you have to be like on the mark with it. And I think when you're doing that, you're just going to have a lot of shots like these where you're like, nope, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. You know, like this one, it works. Like the angles don't make any sense. There's a lot of lean between here and here. You know, like this is definitely not straight up and down like it would. It looks yeah. like that whole, but I'm okay with that almost fisheye kind of effect um, because the distortion isn't connecting with her. And we're appreciating what it is. It's just the it's just the placement of the wine bottle that bothers me. Same thing. Yeah. This one works okay. So you're gonna have to keep her closer to the lens. That's definitely something that's throwing right. it off if you're right. looking. So if you uh -huh. want to shoot and you like these angles, I'm fine with it. But you're gonna have to keep your subject closer and everything else further away. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And what I'm doing is writing down notes while you're talking, which is why I'm quiet. Um, okay. Um, and it would be interesting. I, I, I don't know um, why Google Plus didn't pick up my photo details, probably because 
I didn't export the metadata. That's I don't okay. think, I think this shot of her standing, I don't think I'm at 24. I think I'm probably more in the middle. Um, and I, I, I don't use wide angles a lot. So it, it's an area where, you know, I could, I could probably build my chops. The art director I was working with was, was pushing the wide angle, wide angle, wide angle all the time, all the time. Um, and I do totally get what you're saying. And you know? also, um, the posing stuff that, that I, I need to be more aware of. I really am aware of this, you know, making a space in the arm, between the arm and the body and the, and the ribs. You, you nailed it in this one. She's uh, got great language. She's yeah. got great power. She's got great attitude. Everything that you could have did with posing is right here. It's the most flattering you could have made the yeah. outfit because the jacket's loose around her, so it's not sitting in tight against her figure. But we're getting yeah. a very feminine line here. Well, um, yeah, and that's the one that, that Suzanne, the art director, a friend of mine, they, we both like this one a lot. Yeah, this is definitely the clear winner. Like, the others aren't even competing for me. You know, what's great is, you know, even though, you know, things got kind of crazy at the end, they, you know, they went to Neiman Marcus, <laughs> put $3,000 on the credit card so they could wear these clothes for the shoot. <laughs> nice. Which was really good. Um, yeah, I would love to see you explore this more because I like, there's definitely like a style that's coming in that I haven't seen in other people's work that I think good. would be very signature for you. Yeah, and I really um, want to go in this direction of um, sort of story portrait, power portrait, um, Delicately, carefully, speed lit on location portraits. I got a. Oh God! I, and, uh, do you do you know a woman named Julian McRoberts? No. She's a lifestyle shooter in New York. She did a picture of a preacher with a church, and it's just kind of inspired this whole idea, and it was really cool. Um, but I like this. I like the idea of you know getting out into the world with with just I enough light. I love the um, I love the style and the contemporariness in the story that's being told. Oh, thanks. Um, from from the standpoint of looking at it, I think if you're going to keep shooting with these very interesting angles, which I would love to see you explore more, some of the things that I'm immediately noticing is that all of the ones that we can agree are too distorted or don't work for her. She's very close to the other items. So look at how close she is standing next to the car. Oh, to the car, yeah. As opposed to this one, which works with the body language. Got it, okay. You know, so this one works, this one works. As far as her body not being, you know, distorted. Um, and it's upward angles too, because these all work and you're about at head level with her. Mm -hmm. The lower angle does not work without distorting her and making her head incredibly small because yeah. you're getting the distortion vertically then. Even yeah. if you separated from the car in the background, it's messing up her and creating the distortion with her. So you're going to have to stay close to the areas you want to accentuate with portraits. That's the head and the torso. So if you want to shoot from a low angle because you're shooting tall buildings, you're going to have to bring her body towards the frame in the upper body and have her bend towards the lens Got it. instead of leaning back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I love that you're, I love that you're experimenting and, and testing with this because I think a couple few practice sessions like this um, yeah, yeah. that you'll nail it and then everybody will be like, how does he do that? Well, I got another, um, another person who um, is a much more entertaining temperament, who is a personal trainer and professional bodybuilder, and she's a skateboarder. She's like 35. And Menlo Park has these giant skateboard bowls in one of their parks. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect situation to set up strobes and get like midair crazy, crazy stuff with a beautiful dame. So I love that it. Be, that could be fun. Okay. So that's my next my next project. And this woman's nickname is Joe Animal. <laughs> nice. So Okay, so I love that you brought a whole bunch of pictures from the same session cuz I think that that's way more helpful than the people yeah. that bring six images that they think are stellar and know are their best quality that they're not going to get a lot of critique yeah. on cuz when you can look at a series like that you get a lot more out of it in terms of what's well, I knew that you know, I knew that going in that I didn't want to give you a bunch of gobbledygook. I wanted 
to show you the good, bad, and the ugly. Because one of the things that happens to me when I when I shoot something like this is, is <laughs> I tend to avoid editing because it, it just sucks the time out of my life. And then I get kind of caught up in, you know, this one or that one or that one or this one or that one. So, um, you know, it was good. I made myself sit down and do this so we'd have some stuff to look at. And it was kind of helpful knowing that I could get another pair of seasoned eyes to look at these and sort of help me um, sort of confirm or push me in one direction or another based on what I was thinking. Because, you know, um, I, I think a lot of creative people can can go into these things with, with a lot of self-doubt and, and all of a sudden you get caught in this thing, like all of a sudden you forget what you like. Um, well, and I think um, I think you're one of those people that are poised for success because you're not afraid to bring images that you know aren't right, you know, and mm -hmm. learn from them. And some people, their egos just won't let them do that. Like they're so afraid of hearing like yeah. this sucks um, that they just won't bring it because they kind of know it, but they don't know why it's not working. Um, so I think if you have the courage to bring that to critique, people like you are the ones that stand to grow the fastest and with yeah. the widest success range so um yeah i'm finding i'm coming out of oh yeah deep hibernation with that i mean the nourish was really a blast i kind of wish we'd had time to look at all of our pictures together next um, one's coming yeah. i set the date oh you did what's the yeah, date it's the first week of september over labor day weekend oh we got horseback riding and canoe we're going kayaking we're gonna go do some nature stuff i have the neapolitan coming in and a couple of other models um, and I definitely set aside more time for one-on-one, -on -one and it's very scheduled and structured. So we'll get a lot of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stay away from the horses, but I like kayaking. Okay, good. Well, then we'll definitely do that. Um, um, and that's on the Facebook site? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post in it later today for all the people that were at the first Nourish, because I'd love to get some of your feedback and suggestions and critique yeah. as well. Um, but I would definitely, I think you do better, um, in person than you oh, do yeah. coming and doing critique in the community. So mm -hmm. I would love to, um, spend some more time because now that you got to see a session, I would love to have you come back in and have you do a session where I can just kind of observe, um, and yeah. then give you feedback on shoot set where we can catch those things off the bat and change them right there. Yeah, I, I think, think a lot of it would be in the posing and, and that sort of thing. Um, I just got to look at my schedule, and um, I've got, I definitely have frequent flyer miles. Um, awesome. And so I can work out the logistics on that. Cool. Um, okay, so Sphere 2, are you thinking about continuing, or do you feel like... I think I'm probably going to bow out of the Arcanum, but before I cast that in stone, maybe maybe you can give me a little pitch, like, why should I stay <laughs> You should stay because I'm awesome. Oh, I don't want to leave me. I don't want to make it personal. I'm so no. sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, you know, the bottom line is, is that um, it's going to serve people to a certain point and then that's it. If we're being really honest, can I, can I sell you on it and keep you in? Yes, absolutely. That's my, my job as one of the masters here. But if you don't feel that it's serving you, then it probably isn't. And being that you're one of the few that I've gotten to work with online and in person, you thrive from in-person, hands-on yeah. experience. And I feel like you probably got more from me spending four days in Vegas than you did four months beforehand in the Arcanum. Well, one of the things that happens when, when I, um, I mean, initially in the Arcanum, it sort of went through an arc. I was really enthusiastic, and I jumped in, and I, you know, gave a lot of comments, and I, you know, um, always felt like I was commenting way more than I was getting comments yeah. about my work. And I was pretty diligent, thorough, and thoughtful about the comments that I created. And I put a lot of time into them, but very little came back. Um, and, you know, I actually um, have share a lot of the sentiments that Wayne Labatt um, expressed in his um, email. And, and a lot of it is, is Google+. Plus. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm a tech guy. I really don't have the patience for... Um, marginally functional software. Yep. A lot of the masters complain about that as well. And, you know, every time I talk to somebody that's anybody at Google, they keep saying, yeah, we're going to, we're trying to get rid of Google Plus. We're trying to figure out how to get rid of it. 
So, uh, you know, I don't know where that's going to leave Trey and all the masters, but, um, or maybe they're going to come up with something that's got better usability and better bandwidth. I don't know. Um, a couple of the masters actually built their own sites and operate off of Google Plus, which is interesting. Hmm. But uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've got a lot on your plate already. I mean, you do a lot of stuff. Um, well, here's then, the here's the difference between Sphere <clears throat> 2 and the Foundation Sphere. The Foundation Sphere, all of you had the same 20 assignments that you were trying to personalize yourselves into what you're trying to grow. Um, Sphere 2, everybody's doing different things. So your 10 levels or assignments are completely different than anybody else, and they're based off of what you are doing specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's based off of a conversation we have. So basically, this yeah. is your chance to go, look, I don't want to do that. There isn't the same thing. Like, there's none of the comment on three people's assignments and stuff. Like, that was kind of to get used to Google Plus and the Arcanum interface. We're past that now. Mm -hmm. So is that, it's, is that curricula that you created, or is that curricula that came with the, the, the foundation structure from Trey? For the, for the first 20 spheres? Yeah. Or the first 20 first levels? 20. Yeah. Um, that was, um, there's kind of a general syllabus, like level four will be a critique of five images. And level three, you will submit your top 10 images. Like, a lot of that is the basis of the foundation to get you used to the Arcanum, and then the masters put their spin. Like, for level one, they just wanted everybody to share five images, you know, mm -hmm. and I had pick the one image that defined you. So we have the ability to tweak it and kind of make Okay, because I did notice when I'm, when I'm actually in the Arcanum in my account, there would be a dissertation on what the next challenge is, but it would be either different or one before or one behind the one that, that you would have presented in the um, Hall of Records or wherever it was. that. Yeah, you, I don't you, do good at following the rules. So, um, yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, they, <laughs> they, kinda, they brought a lot of us in to teach higher spheres, but the, if I came in to teach sphere four, there's nobody at sphere four yet. Sphere three is the highest any of the apprentices have gotten because it's new and people yeah. are still traveling. So I wouldn't have even started yet. So um, that's part of why sphere one is closing because I, I don't want to do that. And I don't feel that me doing that is benefiting any of my apprentices right now. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to work one-on-one -on -one with you guys. So. Yeah. If you decide that you want to stay, then really what should happen right now is you should so you should look at where you're at and what you're trying to accomplish and go look, J Lark, I want to um, I want to get photo trainer up and going. I want to keep working on my portfolio. I want to perfect this angle thing so that I can do all these crazy awesome shots that nobody can figure out how to replicate. These are my priorities. You know, I have people that are working in completing books, people that are working on gallery shows, people that are working on education platforms and sites, people that are street photographers and looking to improve there. Like everybody's in very different genres yeah. right now. Um, so we can focus on sphere two. It becomes more of a mentorship where you go, this right. is what I'm looking to do. And then we structure that. There's still 10 assignments, but they're based off of what you want to do just to be able to measure. So, you know, you can go, I want to improve my marketing. Well, that's really wide ended. But if you say, you know, I have very little following on Facebook and I'd really like to start ramping that up, then we can do tasks that are associated specifically with that that are measurable. Yeah. So measurable goals are the key to success. When you can say, I have accomplished this and I move forward, that's the idea. You know, but I also think that if it's if it's boring you and you're not you don't like the Google interface and you don't want to work, then it might be time to step away from that and look at some other options in mentorship or or something else that you can do. Yeah, well, I always want to work. I just want it to be efficient and productive. And I find that um, I, I to kind of think I've reached the limit of the um, the uniqueness of either the Arcanum or the 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 Google Plus. You know, post pictures, get comments. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm like a lot of people. I'm, I'm given the clickbait just the way everybody else is. So if I, I'm not careful, you know, I could wind up spending an hour, hour and a half just looking at other people's posts and TED Talks and this, that, and the other thing when, you know, I really need to be doing other stuff. And I have time issues. Okay. Um, mostly bad habits. 
and I'm, I'm much more disposed to, you know, opening up the computer and, you know, I'll write a comment to, you know, um, what's her name for 45 minutes. And then, and then next thing I know, Oh shit, I'm late for an appointment. Okay. So uh, what would make it, what would make it um, productive and efficient and inspiring for you in sphere two? What would well, you I think to? probably I would, I would want to um, find out what I'm not doing in terms of marketing do. Um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a photographer. I'm comfortable with what I've worked. I don't need to see people's, pictures of their travels or their scenics, or their landscapes or whatever. I just, you know, kind of feel like I just, you know, I need more specific help on the pain issues like marketing, showing work, producing work, editing work. Um, and I also feel like I have enough potential for sharing my work through photo trainer and through Facebook and through my websites and you know, I'm going to do a blog for each. Um, and there I actually have a more targeted audience of, of either people that know me or people that can hire me. The Arcanum is kind of like going into a cul-de-sac of, you know, the lowest common denominator. And I don't mean to be rude, but um, that's kind of how I feel about it. Well, they're definitely, you know, uh, the Arcanum is not potential clientele. It's a... Uh... It's education. Like when you go to college, none of your peers are your potential clients yeah. either, but you're learning together how to grow. So um, here's what I can tell you. There isn't any of the you have to comment on these photos and provide feedback. We still encourage it if you have something worth saying. So if something jumps out at you and you go, hey, that picture of her would have been great if it didn't have the you know, Neanderthal forehead and you can avoid that by doing this, then absolutely put your expertise in. Yeah. Um, but there's no requirements for it. Um, and there is no like show your images, level up, go to critique, show your images, level up, go mm -hmm. to critique. Okay, cool. that's, that's not in there. So um, you have two different directions that you're in. You have the photo trainer site and who you are as an instructor. And you have the portrait business and work that you're doing and who you are as an artist and photographer. So my general feeling would be that you should pick one of those to focus on for the next sphere if you want to go forward because mm -hmm. they're very different directions and the clientele is different and the marketing is different and the work that needs to be done yeah. is different. And I feel a little bit like you'll end up trying to spin plates and having them all crash. But if you get one up and going and spinning well, that's when you step away and start the next one. Mm -hmm. So which is more important to you right now? Probably photo trainer. Okay. And what would you like to accomplish with Photo Trainer? What needs to be done yet? What I need to, I need to, I need to redo a complete marketing strategy on that. Okay, how's so. how's the technical and the website? Is Photo Trainer ready to market it, right now? It's really close. I've got, I'll, I've actually gotten two. I've gotten four sales since I set it up for three weeks ago. Okay. <clears throat> And a lot of it is my learning curve with this company called Mind Body, who runs the back end e commerce. Okay. That was set up primarily to service yoga studios, health spas, and gyms. And um, so, and there's been a learning curve on that, which I've been not the best customer. Um, I sort of go in and go out, and then I leave it long enough to forget everything. But now I'm I'm pretty much in there daily, if not three times a week. Um, and I'm thinking of bailing on constant contact and going to Mailchimp. Okay. And you know, completely revamping my mail list. How um, big's your mailing list right now? It's about sixteen hundred people. Okay. But that doesn't include all of my people on LinkedIn and, and friends on Facebook. Well, and I have two, I have two not Facebooks. It though, right? Just the, you have a mailing list that you're sending stuff out to and then you're also marketing on social media? Well, yeah, I, I'm sort of, that's the idea. I'm not actively doing that now. It, it's, it's all spotty at best. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm meaning to go and watch your social media. 
um, hangout that you created a few weeks ago. I just haven't had time. I think that you would do better with just coming in for a one-on-one. -on -one. So one of the other things oh. um, that you'll be able to do is instead of doing critique levels where we necessarily look at the images and pull them apart, you can set level 24 or 29 for a hangout and go, I really want to work on this. And it can just be a learning session instead. And I can spend an hour with you on social media or marketing or connecting your accounts so that you can do less. So, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you want to focus on, we can do that. Right. So, but that's, I'm, I'm at 20 now, right? Yeah. So this is all part of sphere two. So we had critiques at level four and level nine and 14 and 19. So you'll still have time with me at level 24 and 29, but you can decide how that time is spent. It doesn't have to be yeah. like, here's my five images. And then how do I get to 24 from 20? Uh, they're set up as individual levels based on what you're telling me. So right now it looks like we'll be doing some research on MailChimp versus what are you with right now? Constant contact. Constant contact. Um, your mailing list is a big one for you, so we might spend some time there. You know, you said you want to you want to focus on showing the work and editing the work, so that would probably be the art side of it. And yeah. what are you not doing in marketing? In order to know that, I have to know what you are doing in marketing. So it's it's a, probably a little more post, but you write lengthy posts anyway. So I don't think that'll be too daunting for you to spend no. time and be like, this is what I'm doing in marketing. Here's where I'm seeing success. Here's where I'm seeing nothing. What am I doing wrong? Or what do I need to do to make this successful? Yeah. You know, I'd like to grow my Facebook. I'd like to grow my LinkedIn. I'd like to step away from social media and just focus on email, which may be a way to go because you tend to contact me via email rather than in social media. Well, and the, the reason for that is that Google Plus has very hidden way of doing private email messages, and I don't I don't feel like all of my communications should be public. <laughs> yeah, no, I New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, no, I and I totally agree. But even still, like we're connected on Facebook, and you'll email me before you'll Facebook me either in yeah. a message. So. Well, and it might be, you know, it might be a generational thing. I just don't, I'm just an old guy. I'm, it's not, it's not at all a criticism, but I'm a big believer yeah. that what works best for people in terms of marketing is what they do on a personal level. So if you're more inclined to send me an email or send a client an email, I'm not. I will totally message them on Facebook and have a conversation with them. That's who I am on a personal level. So that works really well for my marketing plan. So if email works really well for you and that's your first instinct is I need to contact so-and-so, let me write them an email as opposed to let me tweet or let me link in or let yeah. me Facebook, then that's cool. what we should build your marketing plan around because that'll be the most intuitive and the shortest learning curve. Yeah, I understand that. And it, it might also be um, time for me to get a little more familiar with, with communicating through Facebook because it is quick, it's efficient, it's reliable. And email... You never really know when people see or get messages. Right. Um, you know, I can see things evolving. It's just um, everything's a moving target. Yeah. Um, and it gets daunting when you're trying to accomplish all of that at once. Yeah. Which is why having specific levels. So you'll still have the tasks. They just, it isn't everybody submit five images. Like, Somebody else's is submit the first 20 pages of your book that you're putting together and yours may be send me the links to all your social media and tell me what you're doing on them all right now. You yeah, 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 that or, would work. Or send me another yeah. session like this. So it just depends on, okay. on what it is that you want to do. Well, that that that's that's good because I do consider your one of your strong points is your, your ability to really finesse the, the social media. So I can learn that from you. And in this context, it would it would seem fine, and it's very reasonable because again, I'm paying the early applier fee. You're not making any money on me. I'm paying thirty bucks a month. <laughs> I'm not making any money on anybody. Nobody, nobody teaching at the Arcanum is getting rich off the Arcanum right now. All of us love the teaching element. Someday, though, someday though, we will. I have faith. I've seen the marketing plan for like three years from now, and what we'll be making. So, I. Oh. Um, I hope that comes true. 
I hope so too. But you know what? Honestly, even if like for whatever reason they were like, nah, we're done. This was fun. It was all an experiment by Trey on the social standards of artists. Like, you know, they could close it up tomorrow. I wouldn't feel like a waste of my time. Um, and it's nice. Most of the people that are in Sphere 2, they're all over the world right now. So yeah. um, it's a very eclectic mix of personalities in terms of so, geography and focus and genre and time zone. So zone's. that's the main place to go is the Artist Atrium? The Artist Atrium is a collection of everybody in the Arcanum that has hit at least level 10. So that connects you to every other apprentice in the Arcanum but, and most so, of the masters. So do you still have your own House Lark group? It's yeah, I have I have House Lark Spear Two and House Lark Spear Three. Okay. So it'll you'll be in a small community just like you were in Aurora's with just the people that are in Spear Two. I don't know if I've got House Lark Spear Two as one of my known communities. I think I have to sort of initiate no, you'll, that you'll get an invite for that as soon as we're done here because you're not in Spear oh, Two yet. I see. Okay, I get it. Okay. Duh. So it's like you don't get to go to the high school until you're in ninth grade. Yeah. You know, a same same idea. Um, so, photo trainer, you like your mailing list? You like LinkedIn and Facebook? Are you on Instagram or Twitter or any of the others, or is that pretty much it for your social media? Um, I have a Flickr account. I have a 500 Pix account that I've never used. Me either. Um, <laughs> I have a Twitter account I've never used, and um, I can't imagine using Twitter. I think I have a Pinterest account I've never used, and um, I have a Behance account through the Creative Cloud that I just posted a product portfolio to. Okay. Um, and I think I have some modern painting project on um, Behance as well. Kind of like Behance because it's an Adobe thing geared for the design type. Yeah. Um, and um, Flickr, what else? Uh, Instagram, I have, I think, but um, I haven't, I haven't sort of warmed up to it, you know. And it's funny, I, I, I was um, talking with a client yesterday. I said, There's a company in San Francisco that wants to work with me. And this company is called Blueboard, and they go to big companies and they say, you know, if you have employees that you want to reward, we have a whole series of events and experiences that, you know, we can provide for your, your clients. And one of the things they want to provide is, is, you know, camera lessons and teaching. Okay. So we're thinking of jumping in bed together on that. So that's sort of an, a marketing idea that's completely different than AdWords and sending out newsletters and, um, you know, using companies to promote me through Facebook or use, you know, and pay, or right now I'm also doing Yelp. I'm paying Yelp $335 a month and I can't figure out why the hell I'm paying them for that. And that's going to stop. Um, and, you know, the, the, the logic for that is because I have, five stars on Yelp for eight years running. And I'm thinking, okay, everybody goes to Yelp and they see how great Photo Trainer is. What can Yelp do to help me book classes? And it's been diddly. No, I would I would cancel it. I don't spend any money on advertising. I know. Um, and I don't think that you need to, especially if you have 600 1,600 people on your mailing list, those are all people that have opted in and want information yeah. on that. And there's more I can add. You know, there's there's probably another two or 300 people. Well, you think about it, like, based on what you're going to put your rates at and how Photo Trainer works, even at 1%, that's 16 people that will sign up from your mailing list without anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's not including any of your social media. So yeah. I... You know, like what you need as a percentage is very, very small in order to keep yourself motivated and afloat, you know, financially, depending on how you're mm -hmm. pricing. And we can work on the on the pricing of that, too. So um, if you decide that you want to stay for another sphere. From where you are right now, if I can wave my little magic photo fairy wand and get you to where you want to be, what do you want to say is accomplished by the time you walk out of Sphere 2 at level 30? 
Um, well, my classes are all booked. How yeah, many I'm classes? In advance. Um, well, let's see. I have, I mean, I have a bunch. But, you know, I have, I have core classes, which are camera and Lightroom training. And then I have photo field trip classes. And there's about... Are these a reoccurring schedule? Like, can I go on and see all the classes for the year? Or how do you have that set up? Um, I have them basically three months ahead. And I just finished um, for August. So, um, and Sarah and I are working on a calendar. We tried a calendar widget for WordPress that wasn't working. So we're going we're gonna to try to set it up with a Google calendar so people can just click on the calendar and see everything that's, that's on the books. Okay. For the next three months, but I have um, tide pools, um, um, photo field trip. I have a Baylands photo field trip. I got macro flowers. So you have portraits. them. You have them booked out. People can book them out or see that they're there at least three months yeah. in advance. Yeah. How many classes are you doing in a three month time frame? Oh God. 10, 20, 50, 5? Mm -hmm. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay. Nineteen or twenty. So twenty classes in three months. And how many people um, per class? Six. And do the prices vary based on the class, or are they all pretty much the same? They're between 150 and 225, and um, I also what we don't see on the schedule are individual trainings that I that I offer, and I um, and I sell those the most, and I probably sell an average of, of four one-on-ones a month without doing any promotion. And those are 300 each. How many would you like to do a month? Oh, let's see. I can, I can bump that up to 10. That'd be nice. Okay. And then are those like one-day classes or what's the one-on-one? -on -one? No, the one-on-one the, the -on -one is two and a half hours. Okay. Um, so it's just a little over 100 an hour. Macro flowers... The, the photo field trips, really got to find a better name for those, um, are 225, and they're usually 9 to 4. And that's a one-on-one, -on -one or that's no, a... No, that's a group. It's a okay. small group, and I, I, I really like the small group situations, which I, why I need to fill the classes. Um, and it's a two-phase thing. We shoot in the morning, and then we come to the office here, and we... We look at everybody's work in the afternoon in Lightroom, so they get the experience of shooting and seeing their work in the same day. Are you happy with having about 20 classes over a three-month time frame, or would you like to do more or less? Um, I'm happy with that because it's usually weekends and evenings, and that leaves me daytimes to do portrait and client work. Um, and I just put in a bid, for example, to a company to photograph a carotid artery stent delivery system that's three days of work for 14 grand that sounds lucrative but not yeah. something I would not your cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so here's what i'd like to see then if you decide that you want to come into sphere two i would like to see you focus all of sphere two on photo trainer We'll get your website up and fine-tuned. I'd like to touch on your mailing list. I want to see all of your schedules um, for the classes, how many you're doing, how many people you're having in, what the potential is, and how much income you want to earn, as well as where you are spending your advertising and marketing money and how yeah. much. Um, and that's, that's basically what I'm going to do. So when you go into Sphere 2... When you click um, to elevate, you'll go into level 20, and then I can send you an invite for Sphere 2 if you want to stay with me. You can look at some of the other masters, too. There's a lot of masters doing good stuff right now. Um, but if you decide to come in with me, then there's something called the Wishing Well exercise. That's your first assignment. That's your level 21. 
And um, you can go in and find that. It's a new community, but it works exactly the same way. So you go, you find the wishing well, and you can see some of the other people and what they were posting. I want you to fill that out. Um, and then based on that and this hangout, I will build you a custom 10 level sphere. So there are sure. no assignments for you in there right now. Okay. Except for the wishing well. When you're done the wishing well, then you will get what's called Tom Upton sphere map, and it's your specific 10 levels, which are totally different than anybody else's. In there. Oh, I like this. Yeah. So once I post that, it'll say level 21 is, for example, uh, level 21 is um, share your mailing list and your list for uh, mail things that went out forward me on them so I can see what's going out okay. to your mailing list and, yeah. you know, the companies you're working with, et cetera, et cetera. And then you'll just go in and you'll request to level up when those are done. Once you read through all 10 of the assignments, you have the ability to give me feedback. So you can go, Jess, I really don't yeah. like level 25 or instead yeah, of I looking totally at my... And, and would expect that. And that's great. Yeah. So um, the deal is if you don't like any of the level assignments, if you don't feel they fit with what you're trying to do or they're not inspiring or you're like, no, I'm, I'm not digging this, totally fine. But you have to submit an amended level. So you can go, I don't want to do okay. that. But yeah you know, here's what I would like to do. Yeah. And then I'll go, that's great. Or mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, we can do that, but I'd like it structured this way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's good. Cause I, you know, from nurse, I totally got, you know, your business acumen is like dead on and I'm not far from that. I'm just, I'm just, I just got some blind spots that need illuminating. Okay. Probably just a little behavior change. Um, but, um, you know, I think it's a good idea. I think you're, it could work. You're close. I think you have the basis and all the ingredients for the recipe. We just have to fine tune the amounts, you know, a pinch yeah. here and a helping there kind of thing. Um, and maybe it's a little too much salt, but I think if we just tweak like some very light things, you'll see a lot of big um, change for very small efforts on your part, just mm -hmm. in different directions. Yeah. Um, but I think you have the basis of it down. We just have to tweak it now. Okay. So. And, um, Feel free to go visit phototrainer.com <laughs> when you have a free moment. I will. Um, that'll right. definitely, if we're focusing on that, then that's probably what yeah. we'll be doing the whole time. And one of your critique levels will probably be to spend an hour with me where we can go through the site um, too and give you some good feedback. Um, and that's something I'd love to see you do too. So that's where critiques come in rather than going, what do you think about this image? you know, posting in and going, this is my website. This is my whole sphere is built around this. What do you guys think? And get some fresh eyes from people that are potential students. Yeah. And I have to, I have to really rejigger the, and understand the user experience because everything is so different. Um, it's been probably, I mean, geez, was it 2007 or 2008 when we did the, the first revamp of the photo trainer website. So it's, it's been long overdue and it's taken me a year and I've been working with this designer photographer um, a couple of towns away who, who's, you know, got, she's got a good work ethic. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't have the time and money to redo the whole thing, but I want to make sure that um, it works and it's functional and it attracts people. Take your money away from Yelp and put it into your website. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to contract for them for, for another month, and then I think I'm done. I what's am the, done. What's the fee if you quit the contract? Because um, it might be less than it is for you to keep it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's only got a month to go. I mean, I'll, I'll find it and check it out. Yeah. Um, I It amazes me how many people do that. Like, oh, I don't want to quit my cell phone contract because I had to pay $200, so they're going to stay in it for another eight months and spend the $800. You know, no, it's up. Uh, it's coming up um, soon, and I just need to go in and, you know, click that box that says "Do not renew." Yeah, definitely do that before they charge you because they won't refund you. Um, and I've had you a know, couple of people do that. Um, I don't know how they survive. They're they're just predatory. I don't know. Yeah, um, I'm gonna um, when we're done, request your level ups. Get up to level twenty. Let me know if you want me to send you an invite. If you do, when you get into the Sphere 2 Lounge, I would love you to just post the photo trainer site and go, this is my education website. Would you buy? 
and that's okay. it. I don't want you to preface it. I don't want you to set the tone and, and set it because most of the people that are your potential clients are finding it organically without you being able to pre-sell them. So, you know, this is my site. What do you think? And let them, let them give you some feedback because I have macro photographers in there. I have portrait. I have event. I have street photographers. Like you've got a very wide array of potential clients to give you very fresh perspective that have never put eyes on your site and have no context except would I invest in this right now? Mm -hmm. And they're all people that are paying for the Arcanum. So they're willing to invest in education. Yeah. So it'll, it, I think idea. that'll give you some good feedback. It's a good idea. All right. Um, I have another critique, so I'm going to end the you do. podcast. How are you feeling? Was it worth your time and investment so far? Oh, yeah. I think I'm getting a bargain. Okay. Good. Uh, I like to hear that. I'm stopping broadcast before you say anything yeah, else. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's just the time thing. Um, you know, that's going to be my big struggle. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, good. Well, welcome to Sphere 2. All right. Thanks. Okay. So how do right. you